You know what? Designing a new range of paints is really tough. But who cares about that if you can make amazing paints like this one? For the past four months, I've been testing an incredible new range of paints from some new faces in the industry. Meet Marcel. Hello. And Phil. Hey. They're 1001 paint, and together with Jonas, they're going to be taking on the biggest paint manufacturers in the world. So I've been putting their paints through the paces before they launch their Kickstarter next month. And trust me, there's a lot to be excited about here. But there's a huge amount of paints already on the market, and there's more yet to come. So I guess the question I want to answer is... So this video is part review and part introduction to 1001 paints. What I'm going to do is introduce some key elements that differentiate their paint ranges from other ones you may have seen already. Then I'm going to compare them directly against those other brands, as well as throwing in some technical details that they shared with me through our interviews. We'll get into the detail, but for now the things you need to know are the company was founded by Ordinary Friends, playing tabletop games, painting our miniatures and is about to launch a range of 53 regular paints, 8 fluos and 8 metallics. Now I've been lucky enough to chat to the team behind Ultra Series a number of times over the past few months, so here's what they had to say about the main features of their new paint. We use a lot of really, really expensive pigments, some pigments um, you can't find in a regular miniatures paint. There's going to be 69 paints available in the Kickstarter, but as a beta tester, I was only able to test the first 13. As I did in my Chimera video, I simply put a drop of each colour onto the wet palette, then extended it down in as close to one stroke as I possibly could, just to see how much that pigment really holds together. Then I mixed in some black and white so I could see what they looked like when they were desaturated too. Paints that extend really well and stay saturated are a really good indicator that they're expensive pigments, so yeah, that's a big tick. The next thing I like to do is pop them on these natty little colour cards. I got these from this bay, but there's lots of different versions out there. I paint a single thin coat over black and white just to see what that coverage really looks like. And you can see the coverage on the ultramarine blue, the red, the yellow, the orange and the toxic green. Fantastic. I mean, of course, another way to use a paint is to actually use it. So this time I just mixed up a simple transition from brown through to yellow, just to really show how easy these paints are to mix. I really enjoyed working with them. They're sort of like a cross between the quality of Chimera paints and the consistency of Pro Acryl, if that makes any sense to you. Suffice to say they were simple enough to generate really bright, saturated transitions, and just a real pleasure to use. If you like the model by the way, it's called Maldita and is by Attaboy Models. I'll put the link in the description below. And can I also say that yellow was applied in one coat over black with an airbrush? What? If you're going to design and make your own paint range, as these guys have, it's not a simple thing. Sure, you can go out to another company and slap their label on the bottle, but that's not what these guys have done here. It's a really technical process and I spoke to Phil from 1001 Paints at length about this. Now, I haven't put the full interview in, thankfully for you guys, but I have put a taster in this next section. I brush it on, it gets darker and darker as the pigment settles and they settle differently. Okay, so once you've noticed that problem, how long did it take you in total till you came up with a complete fix? Uh, this was the biggest problem in the whole uh, processing uh, thing. I think I, I worked over half a year only on this and it's only the first step in the whole uh, manufacturing. Yeah, literally speaking, get your pigment wet. That's the only thing. So at this point, we're two weeks away from the launch of the Kickstarter and the paint range has been in development for about three years. I've been loosely involved for about 18 months, but the company itself has been wonderfully transparent through their Discord and their social media, so I definitely encourage you to go and check that out if you're interested. Now more than ever, it's really important to support small creators who are passionate about this sort of stuff, making incredible products. And if you're able to do so, I definitely recommend you check out that Kickstarter in a couple of weeks. I don't know why you should first need to thin your paint before you can use it. It don't make sense. Yep, absolutely no question, you can just use these paints straight as is with no thinning required whatsoever. It's fluid enough to be used straight into an airbrush if you want to, but not so runny that it becomes basically impossible to mix and use. Personally, I don't mind thinning paints. And at the end of the day, all that really matters is what looks like when it goes on the model. So, let's see that. One coat of yellow over a black primer. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. We really want to go with a really, really matte finish. Marcel explained this as wanting to get away from that cheap look, 
that can sometimes come from gloss or satin paints. Now, while I agree there's a time and a place, I don't necessarily agree that gloss paints are a bad thing. So when you use these paints, they're very similar in finish to products like Chimera or Pro Acryl in terms of their matteness. And that's no bad thing. So all the MSDS, material safety data sheets, for all the additives we're using, and we start looking for allergens and toxic, harmful stuff, and we threw out everything. Wait, what? I just really want to hammer home this point. You absolutely could go out to a well-established paint manufacturer, get them to make your paint for you and just put your label on it. That's not what these guys have done here. They've taken a paint range, decided the characteristics they want to make, and completely built it from the ground up. And in doing so, they've created a paint that's not only wonderful to use, but also completely non-toxic too. That's no small feat. People, they lick their brushes. Each time you lick your brush, you ingest a little bit of it and you say, oh, it's just pain, doesn't matter. That's how far you think, usually. But um, we know better, we know what's in there. And uh, we made a decision for us to um, keep everything that's not really necessary out of it. It might be more expensive, but there's always an, an alternative. I mean, you still shouldn't lick your brush though. Okay, so a quick recap. We know these paints have incredible quality pigments. We know they're fluid right out of the bottle. We know they have a matte finish and we know they're non-toxic. But we haven't really talked about the elephant in the room, which is the Kickstarter and how much it's going to cost. In just a moment, we're gonna compare the paints side by side against other brands. But for now, what paints are actually in the range? We will have uh, one um, white, two different blacks, five yellows, one orange, three reds, some rose, magenta, bordeaux red, uh, violet, very nice uh, cobalt violet also, seven till nine blues, nine greens, also including the um, the cobalt turquoise. Uh, it's a really, really brilliant and saturated turquoise uh, pigment. Titanium buff, apricot, um, chrome, titan orange, yellow ochre, five skin tones and um, three greys. There's eight fluoro paints, some thinner, some primers, and also eight metallics. Uh, Gunmetal, bluish metal pigment, we will have uh, regular uh, silver, nearly chrome. Uh, then we will have gold, greenish, uh, greenish metal one, and um, also um, a copper, yeah, and uh, a dark metal also. As with the regular paints, the metallics are designed to be flexible. You can use them straight out of the pot, same as you would with any other paint, or you can mix with them and add to them, depending on how the mood takes you. These are four pigments we are using for this whole um, metal range and you can mix them between and you can also mix them with some um, translucent uh, other paints uh, so you get some really nice uh, shade. Just for a bit of fun, I asked them what their favorite colors from the range were. By far, uh, the cobalt turquoise. I, I love uh, also the, the cobalt uh, ones, uh, Philip. Um, talked about, um, they are absolutely great, but uh, I also uh, love the ultramarine blue. For me though, it's all about that ultramarine blue and that bismuth yellow. Just before we jump into a direct brand comparison, I just wanna run through the way the Kickstarter is gonna work, cause it's a little bit different. On the 15th of May, the Kickstarter will go live. As with most Kickstarters, there'll be early bird offers, which will reduce the cost of the paint slightly. After the early bird has ended though, the cost of the paint will be roughly three euros 50 for 20 milliliters of paint. There's various levels you can pledge at from eight bottles of paint all the way through to the full 77 paints. And the entire range is either split into regular paints, which are blends to use for army painting or mono pigment paints similar to artist paints or Chimera. So that's all fairly straightforward. And this is where it gets slightly more complicated because 1001 is still a very small company. They can't necessarily afford all the pigments straight away. After all, that's what Kickstarters are for, right? So what they're going to do is expand the range that's available to buy as stretch goals instead. The first stretch goal will unlock regular paints in 24 pots and 48 pots, and the second stretch goal will unlock the fluoros, the metallics, and that full range of 77 paints. This brand test is pretty simple. Literally take four similar looking pigments, paint them onto a base, and then compare the results once they're all dry at the end. There are some starkly different results, but here are the red paints going on. Already you can see the fluidity and the coverage of those ultra paints though. They are really incredible. Some of the paint choices I struggled to get an exact match together, but I chose something that looked broadly similar on the understanding that this test has really started re-evaluating my opinions about some of my previously favourite colours. 
that Citadel contrast Bad Moon Yellow. I was so blown away with it, but honestly, it's absolutely nowhere near the Ultra Bismuth Yellow. Even previous famous like Chimera's The Red are only on par with the Ultra series. Seriously, I'm properly impressed. I was a little bit confused about the blues, however, because for some reason I couldn't make the Pro Acryl work. A quick sweep over the top and you can clearly see the Ultra paints gleaming and well covered. So I just wanted to wrap my thoughts up at the end of this video because honestly I'm properly impressed. Obviously, this is a Kickstarter. There's always risks associated with a Kickstarter, but I don't think I've ever used a paint like this. These paints are fluid like Pro Acryl, decent quality like Chimera, easy to mix, easy to use, relatively affordable. I don't know what's not to like. Some pigments in here are properly stand out better as in I'll be replacing my Chimera paints with them. Others, well, they're just another tool to have on the tray. I don't mind that, that's absolutely fine. In short, would I recommend these paints? Absolutely. Should you go and buy them? Probably. And by buying them, you're supporting a great company with incredible people in it. So, I don't know what's not to like. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And I'll just close with this. As ever, a huge thank you to my ever patient patrons and the people who hang out with me over on my free Discord server. All my links, including those to the Kickstarter, my free Discord, and my affiliate links are linked down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.